All right, so this week's episode of uh, One Piece was a beautiful, gorgeously made flashback episode. You know, the ones One Piece has always been famous for of Kiros, no less. And we, I'm finally glad we get to see this guy because I have to say his eyebrows make him look similarly to Dragon or maybe to some other characters like Goku. But either way, you know, he's, he's a scary looking guy. And I have to say, he does not look 15. And then, you know, when they're telling me he's 15, he's a teenager, I find that very hard to believe, especially with that brow. But either way, uh, if we find out that he's just like this local thug, he killed two other thugs for killing his best friend. And it's just like, like wow, even in a peaceful, you know, country like Dressrosa, there's still crime. So I guess that's why they need a military. Uh, but either way, they imprison him in the gladiator or the arena and you know he's forced to fight in 100 100 battles and if he wins you know he gains his freedom but of course even after winning you know, there's still many people out there like don't release him he's a criminal he's a murderer he's just gonna go out in the street again and kill some other random people he's too dangerous he's an animal a beast and it just hurts so much because it goes back to how in real life, people who go to prison, it doesn't matter how many years they serve, they come back out, they're still treated like wild animals that could kill at any moment. And it's true, sometimes they do, but other times they they like wholeheartedly want to make themselves better. They want to, you know, make up for their mistakes. But you know, we don't let them as a society, we just pretty much uh insinuate that they're criminals and once you're in prison it doesn't matter if you were rightly accused or wrongly accused you were a prison inmate you were a convict you are immediately shunned from society you'll never be able to fit in with anyone you'll never have a life and that hurts i mean that that really hurts to see because they might be good people underneath we don't know we'll never give them a chance to you know prove themselves but either way, he wants to remain in prison. He wants to remain in the arena so he can fight. It's the only thing he's good at. And it shows because he wins 3,000 matches. And after he wins 3,000 matches, he fights King Riku. Of course, King Riku doesn't make it public that it's him. you know. But you know, he says, you know, now that you fought me, you've more than redeemed yourself. You Really, come on, man. I want you to come work for me as captain of my guard. You know, you've clearly shown your strength. You can do a lot of good by going out there and protecting people. You want to make it up to society? Do it that way. And he does. He comes out and people are treating him like a hero because of his amazing battle skills, which again is very ironic because at first that's one of the reasons they feared him is because he was so unstoppable. He was this wild beast that knew nothing but fighting. But because, you know, 3,000 matches later, they, that's exactly the same reason they love him. It's like, he's so strong. He's so amazingly, you know, skilled. It's just... It made me like laugh a bit a bit at the hypocrisy of some people, and again, it's kind of true in you know this world. We don't like violence, but we're out constantly out there impressed by boxers, MMA fighters. It's just like what the hell, people? It's like, oh, it's fine, um, not you know to watch people be violent to each other, but being violent yourself is just wrong. It's like, the hell, hypocrites. But again. That's a different discussion for a whole different, you know, video. Uh, either way, it's still very beautiful how he comes back out. He's loved by everyone except for Scarlet, Rebecca's mother. And she's 15. And she's saying, I don't care what the people of this country says. I don't care what my father says. I still think you're a monster. You're a murderer. I don't want you going near me or my little sister ever again. And it's funny because immediately after, you know, something's going to happen to change her mind. And immediately it's like she's been captured by pirates. It's just like, oh, that was, you know, that was quick. And apparently all her bodyguards were just completely wiped out. And Kiros came in, you know, swimming all the way to the ship. And when he comes up to save her, he starts whacking on the pirate ship like it's a pinata. I mean, this guy just goes nuts. He's just <laughs> destroying all the masts. He's just beating up all the pirates and I'm thinking he, he's just screaming in his head where's the candies I'm gonna smash this boat into tiny little pieces it's like dude, damn take it easy the ship wasn't the one who kidnapped her but you know 
It's just to show how amazingly skilled he is, how strong of a warrior he is. And I would like to see how he fares against Don Flamingo because he has no devil fruit. We don't know if he has any other skills other than his sword skills. But, you know, maybe that in itself is enough. I have no idea. Uh, but either way, you know, of course, you know, that wins over Scarlet's love for him. You know, they fall in love. They want to get married. But, of course, you know, that doesn't change the fact that he has a criminal past. So they have to get rid of that. Or they, you know... You know, supposedly kill off the princess. You know, she apparently has a funeral. Everyone's crying, but it's just so she can be free to go marry Kiros and have you know, a family with him. And it's very heartfelt because you know he's uh, he finally has a daughter, Rebecca, and he's like, no, I don't want to touch such an innocent and pure thing with these hands that have had blood on them. Which I, I have to bring this up because I kind of almost forgot. Uh, during his time as a gladiator in the arena, he seems fine with killing them because, you know, they kill his best friend. It's he, seen, he thought of it as just and, you know, the right thing to do. But as soon as he started getting adoration from people for being strong, that's when he started feeling guilty for killing those people. I think it's because when you're thought of as an animal and as a beast, you start to think of it yourself. And you think, like, it doesn't matter if I kill people because that's what I meant to do. That's all the only thing I can do but as soon as people start believing in you as soon as people start thinking you can do be better you can do something with your life that's when you start feeling the guilt that's when the burden started you know starts getting heavier and heavier it's just like these all these people have faith in me all these people want me to you know be the best I can be but I have blood on my hands I can't do that and it just is an amazing you know uh, thing to watch it just it's so powerful, and again, like I said, One Piece has always been known for making incredible flashbacks, and this is no different. Uh, but anyway, of course, you know, it ends with uh, one day they wake up, and you know, the entire city is in flames. You know, the king is out there killing people because of Don Flamingo, and he's in, in shock. It's just like this guy who's believed in me, who's supported me in you know my endeavors to make myself better, and actually, you know, allowing me to marry his daughter, and you know bear him a grandchild is now all this chaos is happening in the kingdom that i love so you know of course he's gonna have to go out there and fight but we know what happens and it's just so you know hard to see because as soon as he's turned into a toy you know all the people that loved him and cared for him and believed in him immediately forgot him so it's just hard to watch but at the same time beautiful one Piece has always been known for flashbacks. I've said this before. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but it, it's true. It's, you know, they always know how to get you in the heartstrings. And this is just another example of them doing that. Either way, I can't wait for the next episode. I'm guessing it's going to focus more on, you know, his actions of you know, going into the city, trying to take down Don Flamingo, and then him being turned into a toy. Uh... I'm wondering how it, you know that ends up, you know the exact details. Either way, this was a great episode, really heartfelt. I, you know, I just can't wait for the next one. Till then, I'm Tony Dragon. Bye bye.